The final thing I'm going to show you how to do is a parallaxing effect like this. There's obviously a bunch of new stuff here, but it's mostly just art. These trees are just made exactly the same way as like the bed and the dresser were. They're just parented to wall objects and they set their depth in the create event. And this is just another tile set. I'll show you that really quick. Pretty simple as you can see. Just a little elevation, a thing to make like a darker path, and then some water. Ooh! So you don't necessarily have to make a new tile set or anything like that, but what you are going to need to make is some kind of background. So I have made a new sprite and I just named it BG underscore forest for background forest. You can see there's a lot of empty space down here. It's just because you're not, not really going to see it whenever there's going to be some like land under here. Now I made this one here the exact size of the camera because I wanted it to just show up like it was really, really far away so it doesn't move at all. But you can make it to where they kind of scroll around. But first I'm just going to show you how to do it like this because this is a little bit simpler. There's a little bit less to figure out. So uh, just go ahead and make a background and you can make it 288 pixels wide and 216 high or whatever you've set your camera to be. Now I've already created this object so you can just create one yourself. I called it Object Parallax Background. That's kind of a, a big name but just so it was clear. And here you can see we set the depth in the creation code and there are only three lines here in the draw. Now I cheated a little bit. Technically, if you want your parallax to do different stuff, you would need four lines. But first I'll explain what these three are. So, so we have set some local variables here to represent the camera's X position and the camera's Y position. Camera get view X returns the X of whatever camera we put into the function. And for us, that is just view camera zero. So we're getting the camera's X value and the camera's Y value, and we're gonna use that to draw our image. So we have draw sprite, I already talked about this. We're choosing the background image that we wanted to draw. We're choosing the sub image, which would be the frame. And there's only one image, so we can just say the first one, which starts at zero. And we are drawing this image at the exact coordinates that the camera is at, which basically makes it look like it's just stuck really far in the background. Now the depth here is important. Notice I've put a a very high number, which means that it will be drawn the farthest away. Everything else will be drawn on top of it. So if we go into our room, where I've gone to room outside, I have set this parallaxing object up here, just outside of the room, because it because it doesn't actually have to interact with anything. It just needs to be in here. So I've set this here. It doesn't matter where it is because we're specifying in code where it draws its stuff. And all of these layers, their depth, I'm gonna bring this up. You can see the depth of these layers. This is a depth of 200. This is a depth of 300. And our background here, we're actually just gonna turn off. So it doesn't draw on top of our background. So we're disabling this, so there's nothing being drawn here, and then we're sticking our background behind all of this stuff. So just for the sake of testing, I am going to put a player object in here, and then I'm going to go to my room order and put the outside up here, just so whenever I run the game, it starts from this position right here. Ooh! Okay, always remember to make sure all of the uh, numbers down here on the bottom left are what they're supposed to be. Okay, so we see here, you can tell as the camera's moving around, because the camera's position is right up here, that object is also always being drawn in that same point, which makes it look like it's really, really far away. So let's tweak this to make it work a little bit more dynamically. First thing we can do is we can change this to draw sprite tiled. So if we're drawing a smaller one or if we're parallaxing it differently, it won't just cut off. Next is we're going to add an actual parallax value. So we'll add another local variable. So we'll say var p equals 1 for now. So this will be our parallax. All we have to do is multiply our camera positions but by, oh, by our parallax value. So one would mean that we are just keeping the original camera values because it would just be multiplied times one, which makes it look very, very far away. 
if our parallax value was zero, it would be drawing it at zero, zero, and it would just be stationary there, which would make it look very, very close. So the higher the number, the more distant something will look. So let's just put it right in the middle, and we will say if our parallax was 0.5. Now this is going to look a little bit weird with the tiling for this, but you'll get the idea. Yeah, so it looks a little weird, but you see, now it looks a little bit closer than it was, and it actually scrolls along. So this would work really easily with, let's say, let's add a new frame. And we're only drawing the first one, so I'm just saving this one for later. It's not going to actually do anything. If we change all this to the sky color, and then we put little stars everywhere. So it's just a starry background. Perfect. Okay, that shows it off a little bit better. What's cool about this effect is you can keep adding layers onto it. So let's say I want to add a tree layer that acts a little bit more independently. So I'm going to copy this again. I'm going to get rid of the background here. I'm going to get rid of these trees. Get rid of this moon. Get rid of these. And now I can draw this as a separate thing. So let's try that out really quick. I'm going to go back to my objects. We're going to go back to our parallax object. And we're going to draw another layer here. So we'll use the same sprite, but this time we'll use sub image one, which would be this right here. And we'll maybe, we'll just type in our own really quick and we'll just say, make these 0.25. So they're a little bit closer. It's gonna draw on top of this background because we're drawing it down here. And it's gonna look like it's closer because our P value is lower, our parallax value is lower. It's still gonna look weird because of the tiling, but whenever you're working with parallax backgrounds and stuff like that, a lot of it is a little bit of trial and error and just kind of figuring out what works and what doesn't. So you can see here the trees look like they're a little bit closer. Yeah, the, the tiling is weird, but, but you can just play around with it. Anywhere between 15 and 20 seconds ago, I said a lot of it is a little bit of trial and error and just kind of figuring out what works and what doesn't. Now that's a pretty healthy dose of true and false. You can always use like a little bit of math to figure out exactly how big you need an image to be to fit for a certain parallax value. But without getting too complicated, I'm just going to show you some basic tips and tricks on ways to set up backgrounds for parallaxing. I've added a room in this direction, and here we have a multi-layer parallax effect. So the first trick is, if you have a room that has a set height or width where you can't move the camera against one axis, it's a lot easier to make some sprites for parallaxing. Here's the image we just saw. I basically made the image down here in these separate layers. So first, I drew a sky, then I added a new layer, and I drew some mountains. I added a layer, I drew some trees, more trees, then I separated them all out so I could draw them separately. To fix that weird tiling issue I had, here is something that you can do. First, I'm going to get rid of these trees just so I can demonstrate something. I'm just going to draw a little tree line here. All right, this is a little ridiculous, but it'll do. You can see here, if this thing is gonna tile left and right, the left and right sides are not gonna match up. One way you can deal with this is you can just check what Y value on the bottom left here, what Y value this pixel is at, and then make sure that the tree line ends here. But if you get a really complicated image going, there is another way to do it, where I can just kind of take half of this image, I'm gonna cut it out, I'm gonna scoot, this half over to the other side of the screen and line it up perfectly. And then I'm gonna go back up here to grab the other side that I copied and I'm gonna line it up perfectly with the bottom right screen here. And this is showing us what would happen if we tiled. So we would have this little line here. What we can do is just kind of do anything to sort of make it just fit together. Now we know for a fact that these two sides are gonna line up because we cut them in half at the same point. So now this thing will tile left and right perfectly. Like such as. Here's a little peek at that parallax object. I just called it object parallax forest side because it's the side scrolling view. And I separated all of the each individual images out into their own line. And I gave them all their own parallax values. 
So for areas where you can walk left and right and up and down, it might be a little bit more efficient to do stuff where it's like a sort of downward view. So this is sort of like looking down into a little forest with a really, really simple fog mist layer thing. So here's a little peek at that. I'll show you the individual layers here. So I'm going to hide all these. My first one, I just did a black background because I knew I wanted it to be dark. Then I added some trees, which I just used the tree sprite that we already that I already had. I edited it just a little bit. I made it kind of look like they were disappearing into the darkness by adding some darker colors down here. I added a solid blue color, and then I just kind of turned its opacity down to kind of gel the whole image together and give it a, a sort of tone, I guess. Then I added some good old sparkles. And then I added a fog layer, which I don't use here. I use in this other image. Let me turn its opacity up so you can see it. These are just kind of light gray, wispy things. And I used the same technique I used on the trees, where I started out a little bit like this. Let me add, let me make a new version of this just so you can see. I started with a black square, and then I took like a light gray color, and I just made kind of some of these. Something, something like that. Just kind of did a bunch of these. Maybe a big one. So basically, I put them all in the middle. I didn't let any of them touch the edge. So that way, I could separate them like this. Now, I can draw some more wispies in the middle. And we will know that the edges will tile properly. And we haven't needed to for either of these images, but remember, it's going to tile up and down as well. So, it's not really going to matter for this mist, but you can do the exact same thing, where if you have something in the middle that also needs to tile up and down, you can get rid of that, bring this up, and slap this bad boy back down here. It just happens to not really change anything about a fog layer like this. So then I just cut out the black part here, and I turned the opacity down really, really low. Now we have fog. Very nice. And here's the inside of that object. I called this one Object Parallax Forest Floor. And if you look over to the right here, you'll actually see that I've added some more folders of my own. Probably should have mentioned this earlier, but I was kind of busy just rocking and rolling. If you go anywhere in this asset browser, you can right click. You can right click inside of another folder somewhere or outside, and you can go to Create Group and that will make a new folder. And you can store similar assets or assets from like the same area of a game or something like that. You can rename it to whatever you want. So in my objects, I have an environment folder and that's where I just put like environmental objects. So like my bed object, the dressers, the little house object I have, the tree, the wall. I put these background objects the same. You could also call these maybe something like room objects. And in my sprite folder, I've added a backgrounds group for my new backgrounds that I have. You could also put one called an environmental stuff for here, or you could make a folder called like house to put all the house things in. You can make a folder for tile set sprites, for the player stuff, anything. So yeah, there are just a couple little extra basic tips and tricks for you. Uh, cheers, kid. And before I go, I got one more little secret for you. Think of this as your little your little treat for getting all the way to the end here. Let's open up our object warp and go to our draw event. Something that might make this look a little bit cooler is if instead of starting the tiling at the room position 00, zero the top left of the room, we did it based on the camera X and the camera Y. So that way the diamonds will grow out and shrink in the same place on the screen. It just kind of looks a little bit nicer. And you can just set it up exactly the same way you would with the parallax object. So yeah, now cheers. Okay. Ugh. That's the end of part six. Thus concluding our little how to make an RPG thing. Now you basically just have like a creative template to do anything with. We didn't cover any kind of mechanics or anything like that, but that's kind of up to you. I'll probably do some videos on that kind of stuff. And likewise, I am doing a video on a branching dialogue system. That was actually the first one that I wanted to make. But as I was working on that, I realized it was not crazy advanced, but definitely not beginner. 
And I figured since a lot of people are subscribed to this channel who are interested in my game, who would probably be really interested in making games of their own, it'd be best to start with something from the ground up like this. I had a lot of fun making this. It was a good thing to focus on for me. It was, it, it ended up being a, a bit harder than I thought it would be too, but well, yeah, whatever, what are you gonna do? That's not much different from game development. Remember, you can comment with any of your questions. You can contact me on Twitter or on the Rose of Starcross Discord, which I'll have linked below. That Discord has a channel called Your Stuff, which is for anyone who wants to show off any kind of creative things that they're doing. And by about now, you, sh you should be making games. If you got to the end of this and you're making something and you're excited about it, feel free to go over there and share it. I would love to see anything that you're doing. The people there are really cool. They're nice people. It should, it should hopefully be a good time. Yeah, uh, play my game. Pretty please. Subscribe here, because who knows what kind of stuff is going to show up on this channel. There are some Rose of Starcross themed videos. They're, they're not trailers, they're just purely for entertainment. There's the DCTV stuff. Check that out. There's the soundtrack. Check that out. And uh, most importantly, get to making some games. I think that's about it. So, bye!